Hey everybody, good morning, good morning. I am currently trying to see Okay, looks like everything is hooked up correctly. I'm trying to consolidate my comments so that I can see what everyone is saying by using the comments in the software that I'm using, which is Ecamm. So hopefully I will be able to see everyone's comments in one place. Let me just take a look here. All right, if you guys have any trouble hearing or seeing me, let me know in the comments. Hi, Jen. Hi, Yvette. Hi, Heather. Hi, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know why the comments, the YouTube comments are not showing up in the Ecamm. I'll have to play with that some more. In any event, I should hopefully be able to see I've got both windows open. So hopefully I can see all your comments this time. Oh, and let me change it to all chat and live chat instead of top chat. Yay. How is everyone? Happy Tuesday. I just had a couch delivered like 15 minutes ago um, that we've been waiting on for like five months. So excited my couch is here I didn't even remember what it looked like really anymore so <laughs> I was I was pretty surprised it was like Christmas um, but today well first I'm Charlene I'm on the design team here at Pick Fence Studios I go live every Tuesday at 12 o'clock central and I make a card with some of the amazing products here from Pick Fence Studios giving you all of my tips and tricks along the way so if you don't know me, that's me. Today we are going to be playing with some fun stuff from the most recent release. So let me start off by showing you what we're gonna be working with. I'm gonna switch you over here. Here we go. So we're gonna be using the Layering Flora Sweet Cherry Blossom die set. And if you have any questions about what I'm using, there will be a, there's a link in the description. You can always click on that and check it out. Hey, Mindy, welcome. Hey, Kathy, yay. All kinds of my crafty peeps are coming in here. So this is a fun layering die set. We're gonna do some cherry blossoms. And then this is a previously released set. I'm gonna pull my sentiment from this. This is Tweet Tweet Friends. And I just like these little sentiments that it has. And it's also a very cute set. I've made cards with this before. And then we're gonna do some fun stencils. Yay, polka dot scarf six by eight stencil. This is a really cool and unique pattern. I really like it because it's the polka dots, but it's like triangles as well. So really interesting to look at. So let's dive right in my friends. Oh, and before I forget, I am going to give away at the end of this live the card I'm making. So I will be pulling that winner from the comments. So if you're interested in winning the card and have me mail it off to you, be sure to stick around until the end and also be sure to leave a comment because then I will um, include you. Okay, we're going to start with this scarf stencil here. We're going to be using some Distress Oxides today. I've got Salvage Patina and we're going to do some ink blending right in this on the diagonal and we're going to do a fade out. Now what this helps to do is it helps to bring your attention to where the darkest area is and you'll see that as we go on but I'm just gonna get a little bit here on my blending brush and I'm gonna go lightly right along this diagonal because this is where I want it to be the darkest. So I'm gonna start out here, okay? And I'm gonna put a couple of coats on there. Uh-oh, my stencil moved around on me. I should be using my inking palette. Um, and this is gonna be kind of fade off into the background. So it's not gonna be super, super noticeable 
but it's going to help draw our eyes. So I'm going to take this off now so you can see what it looks like now, right? And it looks kind of strange just having a stripe of stencil there. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring in more color to kind of knock back the white here so that that pattern is not so bold. So when you add a little bit of color over something you've stenciled, do you see how it's starting to not be so in your face? Mindy's here. Mindy is um, the queen of ink blending. She knows so much about ink blending and she does this on her cards frequently where she will blend over something she stenciled. But you don't need very much ink on your blending brush. And I'm just gonna take it out a little bit farther, but focusing this ink here in the center, like this. Uh-oh, there goes my doggy. Sorry, guys. Okay, so that's softened it up quite a bit. Kind of fading off into the background there on the sides. We're gonna put a couple of die cuts here. And that's why I say you're not gonna notice this too, too much once we're all done. So that was salvaged patina. And now I am gonna bring in some of our Paper Glaze Lux. This is a new color Twinkle Light C. Let's see, Nicole, question, why, why did you start with the stencil blending? Could you have started with blending on the panel first? Yeah, you. either way is fine. I just like to get a sense of where I want that polka dot pattern to be. So that way I know how far out I want to blend. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier for me, but you could do it either way. You could blend out your center and then come in with a stencil, whatever you're more comfortable with. So this is the Twinkle Light C's. This is really, really pretty once it dries, you guys. If you haven't seen the Twinkle Lights line, it's super glittery, it's gorgeous, and um, it almost kind of dries a little bit clear, and really all you see is the twinkly uh, sparkles that are in there. You'll, you'll, get, you'll see what I'm talking about when we finish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my stencil right back down where, where it was before. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you do wanna try and get it over the dots and I'm apparently not doing that. <laughs> Why is this not lining up? Oh, there we go. I think, I don't know. I'm having, I'm struggling here, friends. Those are the two. Oh, because I'm trying to line it up with the wrong row. There we go. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit on my uh, mixed media spatula here. I'm not going to put very much at all. So just that tiny little bit. And you can hear it kind of sounds a little scratchy. That's because of all that yummy fancy glitter sparkly goodness that's in there. It's just gonna kinda scratch along there. So once I've got it on there, I'm just gonna kinda really work it in because I don't care if it goes out and beyond and is not perfect. I want it to sort of be a little bit, mm -hmm. messy's not the right word, but just kinda going off. Now you might be wondering why did I do that over the ink blending? Well, because I said this kind of dries clear a little bit, it's, it's mostly that you see all the sparkly, um, the colored sparkles. And so I wanted it to be a little bit bolder on this. So that's something you can do. You can put it over a color and that color is gonna show through a little bit and be bold and sparkly. And now let me grab a baby wipe because I did not 
put my bin of water today. See, this is why you guys watch me because then you can see what not to do as well as what to do. So a good thing to do is to have a little bin uh, or um, dish of water, soapy water, that you can just toss your stencil and your tool into and let it soak. And then when you're all finished with your card, you can just easily wipe it off and be done. I did not do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this baby wipe. I'm just gonna lay it over the top to keep that uh, mixed media damp. So that way when I do go to clean it off, it will be easy to clean off. So I'll set that aside. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see this is what it looks like when it's wet, okay? Now we're gonna set this aside to dry while we work on our next part. Let me grab my die cutting machine here. We're gonna cut out some of those cherry blossoms. And there are two different cherry blossoms in here that you can layer up. So there's more, the more like traditional style. And you see there's th these three pieces, they get successively smaller, so they're great for layering. And then there's this other style where it's kind of like the leaves or the petals are fanned out. And there's these four pieces. And you can also like mix and match. You could do one layer of this, one layer of that, then this, just depending on how varied you want your cherry blossom to look. And also because cherry blossoms are kind of, uh, kind of a simplistic style of flower, you don't, it doesn't have to be a cherry blossom, right? It doesn't have to be pink. You could do, I think, um, Sylvana's here. I think it was Sylvana. She did a card where she did several different colors of flowers. I think it was you, Sylvana. If it wasn't, sorry. <laughs> but she's not, Sylvana's on, on the design team and she does some beautiful cards. All right, so I'm going to take these three, the more kind of traditional style, and I'm going to cut these out. And then there are two leaf pieces. I'm going to cut the smaller. But again, you could layer these up and they'd look really pretty or do them like on the sides of a flower like this and they'd look really pretty as well. I'm gonna kind of spread these out because they are a little bit uh, more detailed and I don't want them to have any issues cutting. Run this through. And go back. Beautiful day in Naperville, Illinois, Rhonda. Hi, Rhonda. It's um, pretty nice here in uh, Washington today. It's not currently raining, <laughs> which is good. It uh, was raining and yucky yesterday for sure. All right, I'm going to show you. So these little pieces here are what come out. So I kind of just grab them and pull them out like that. And if you want them to fall right out of your die, something you can do is you can cut with your dies with wax paper first when you get like a new die. If you cut it with wax paper, a little bit of that wax will stay on your die cut and it'll help so that the pieces just sort of fall out. I personally don't like that. I want them to stay in because sometimes I like to use the whole piece. So it's easier for me if most of the time they stick in there. So I don't do stuff like that. I, I try to, I want it to cut, but I, I, I also want it to all sort of stay together. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying. We are on the second cup of coffee, guys. I promise. Okay. And you could leave the little center point or pop it out, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna pop it out for this card. And come on, come on, third one. 
Now this one was being a little tricky on me the other day when I was playing around with it. So it might need to get recut, yeah. Let me recut that one. I have, um, those of you that watch normally, you'll know that I was talking last week about, I usually use a magic mat and my magic mat is super old and not performing really well anymore. It's just kind of been compressed so much that it doesn't have enough loft in order to cut the dies really well. So I'm, um, I've ordered one. So you'd be happy to know that, that that is coming and I'll be able to use it again. And I ordered a new, I finally bit the bullet, you guys. I ordered an electric die cutting machine. I am so excited. I spent days, days researching, watching videos, trying to figure out what would work best for me. Because, you know, each, like, it's not something that works for me may not work well for someone else, right? Because different people have different um, things that are important to them and different styles. You know, some people might do a lot of die cutting. Some people might not. It, so, you know, take, take all of uh, uh, the content creators like me you know, we, we do our best just to bring you guys information and show you things and tell you what we like. Um, but keep that in mind. Like, you know, do, do, uh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Sorry, got distracted by the flower. Um, <laughs> keep that in mind when you are looking at machines and things like that. Anywho, I ordered an electric die cutting machine. Super excited. I I know that everybody like right and left loves the Anna Griffin Empress and so that was on my list but also on my list you guys was the Big, Big Shot Switch Plus and so I'll tell you my thought process as we're doing stuff and I'm giving tips along the way on this. I really, someone's going to blast me in the comments for this, but I don't really, I don't really like the way that the Empress looks and I was struggling with that so bad. And I just know myself, right? Like to me, the, the aesthetic of how something fits in my craft room is very important. And for other people, you know, that's way down on their list of things that are important. So that was one thing that I was looking at. And the other thing was that I have a lot of products that will, this is the paper inking palette, by the way. This is what I should have pulled out in the first place when I was doing the first step. This is awesome. I love the paper inking palette. They come in all kinds of different sizes. The five by six is my, probably my most used one, but I really like the big one too. Look how big this is. This is really cool when I'm doing lots of die cuts that I'm coloring, but the five by six is kind of an all around good size. It's not too big, not too small. So what it looked like was important to me, but then also I have a lot of things like the glimmer and the, um, I have the, by the way, I die cut in advance a couple of these guys, just so you guys wouldn't have to watch me, you know, watch paint dry while I die cut things. Uh, but I have the Better Press and I have the Glimmer and they work really well with the Big Shot Switch is what I've learned from watching videos. Now, I don't think that you're technically supposed to use them with that. So just keep that in mind. I think there might void your warranty, but from what I can tell, it works. And so that was important to me. And then also I like the fact that I don't, like the plates don't fall 
like you can run it through and it's they don't fall when they get to the other side okay we have our three layers of cherry blossoms here and then yeah right Nicole affected by how it feels in your space that's exactly right especially because I'm a bit of an anxious person and there's so I need a space that's like clean and calming otherwise I get really distracted by everything else that's going on in my room and it makes it hard for me to be creative other people you know they're fine they, they, they have a million things on their desk and stuff like that I just can't function that way and I tell people don't be like me it's more stressful Okay, what we're gonna do is I've got my pint-sized pouncers, and you can see I've got little stickers here on the bottom. I need to check if these are still in the store. I don't know if they are, but look what I found. So I had ordered some of these trays to use for die cuts, but I found that the small tray from scrapbook.com fits the pint-sized pouncers perfectly, and the large tray fits the full size ones perfectly. Look how cool, guys. I was so excited about that. I just was cleaning up my craft room the other day and I was like, huh, I wonder if those will fit in there. And they did perfectly. I was so excited. Back to, back to inking. We've got spun sugar and picked raspberry. So a light pink and a darker bright pink. So in between these two is kind of kitsch flamingo, but I'm gonna skip the in between because I want there to be a bit of a dramatic shift between the light and then the dark vibrant pink. Right, Nicole? Yes, I was gonna message you about it because I know you had been talking about um, shelves and so I thought, well, maybe she would like the trays. I don't know. Okay, gonna take our spun sugar here and I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna kind of pinch, see? And I'm just gonna go around the edge of my flowers. Doesn't have to be fancy. No, nothing too, I mean, these are gonna get layered up, so no one's gonna notice whether or not your coloring is perfectly even, or in fact, the variation between the, the petals makes the finished piece more interesting to look at. So you can see I'm leaving the centers white and just going around on the petals like so. And it takes like no time at all to do this with the pouncers. They just, they make it so easy. I can't even tell you how much I love these. Well, you guys know, if you know me, you know I love them. My absolute favorite way to color die cuts. Not to say you can't do it with a brush, you can do it with a brush. Just like you can do, you can cut your lawn with scissors. Not nearly as effective. <laughs> okay, I cracked myself up, y'all. Spun sugar dunsky. We're gonna bring in, oh God, sorry, picked raspberry. I'm not gonna worry about getting the color off, but if that's something that you worry about, you can either pounce it onto a piece of scrap paper or onto a paper towel. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of color, like just doo -doo, like that, that's it guys. You don't need very much. And then I'm going to actually pick up my flower and let me get up close so you can see it. Watch this. You see how that just adds that little hint of dark pink around on the edges and really contrasts with the sponge sugar. Looks really pretty in person. You can kind of bring it up more if you want by 
angling your, your pouncer, or you can literally just do it from the side. But it just creates this really pretty two-toned petal. And it's gonna look really nice once they are all layered. And you could do some with and some without. Um, you could darken the center if you wanted to. On a real cherry blossom, you have kind of dark in the center, dark on the edges of the petal, and then it's lighter towards the um, middle of the petal. But there's actually quite a bit of variation in cherry blossoms. I found this out because the other day I was coloring a cherry blossom image and I will often just Google whatever it is I'm coloring in order to get a sense of what kind of colors they are in nature, especially with flowers. Because sometimes like roses, the first thing I think is red. But if you Google rose colors, there's they come in so many different colors, so it can really inspire you to try other things. But I had Googled cherry blossom, and they actually vary quite a bit depending on where they're grown, um, if there's uh, different kinds of cherry trees, right? So depending on the tree, the blossoms look a little bit different in terms of how pink they are, how fuchsia they are. Um, because this is more of like a fuchsia to me, the picked raspberry. Let's see, I needed something to grab and bring the entire set of paper pouncers. Oh yeah, and yep. Yeah, it makes it so easy to just grab them and bring them over to your desk. Della, you agree with me on the color of the Empress, right? It's just. I don't know. And some people, it just doesn't match my room. So my room has a lot of white and bright colors in it. Uh, I love rainbows, you know, I'm glitter and all that stuff. I'm not really, it, I don't like follow the vintage vibe. And I feel like that has a little bit more of a vintage vibe, like would look really nice in a more of a vintage styled craft room. So very little, right? I, I barely picked up any on my pint size pouncer when I am adding the color on here. There, now we have our flowers. I'm gonna set these aside. Close up my ink so I don't stick my finger in it, cause I will. And now we can glue these. Now I wanted to show you something fun this would have looked, or this would have worked really, really well in particular if I had also colored the centers of these. So keep that in mind. But you can take what's on your paper inking palette and, hold on, I've got a little, one of the little centers. And you can just take a piece of paper, it's almost like a gel press, guys, and you just, smooth the paper down over the top and it's going to pick up the ink that is on there. Now, obviously this is not a gel press, but it's just the, the, and it doesn't work with all of the sticky mats I found. It works really well with the paper inking palette though. Let's see. It's going to be kind of hard to see too, because of the light pink. But you see, it, hold on, that light is kind of making it hard to see. But it picks it up. And you can use that as a background. If you had some more darker pink like going on here, because we just have spun sugar on here really. But if you had other colors of pink, you could pick really pick it up and have a nice background to use. Let's glue our flowers together. And when I am layering flowers, I only put glue towards the center of the floral. And the reason is, is because then you can like play with and manipulate the 
petals of the flower and use them in different ways, especially if they're solid petals, you can uh, put foam squares and things like that underneath them. And so here's your first big decision. You always have to decide if you want it to go directly over or if you want to angle it. I'm going to angle this one so that this petal goes in between those petals. It looks nice either way. And then I'm going to put the smallest one going back the other way. So this makes it look a little bit less like a cherry blossom. So if you're going for kind of a different style of flower, by doing that offset with the petals, you're gonna get a little bit more of a traditional kind of looking rounded flower. But see how I can curl up the petals and just give it a little bit more dimension and make it a little bit interest more interesting to look at. And in fact, we can do, well, no, I want them to be rounded for what I'm doing. Never mind. I was about to say we could do one of each style. Just kidding. Yeah, we could. Let's do it. Well, so that way you guys can see it. Put our smallest one on here. And there, that hole in the center makes it really easy to line them up. So when you do it one on top of the other, you're going to get a very different style of flower. See the difference here? So keep that in mind. You can put your petals in lots of different ways. I'm going to kind of fold mine up a little bit. And for this one, I'll do this same rounded style. I need to poke out the center here of this one to make it match. Matchy, matchy. There we go. So I think I was talking about weather. So it's, it's not as cold here today, but man, it's windy. Is it windy where you guys are at? Kathy, what about you? You're in Washington. Is it windy? Let's see. What did Kathy say? I used to have a pastel green rose bush way back in the 70s. Wow. Pastel green. I bet that was super pretty. Okay, I know it's hot where Nicole is, you guys. She was telling me the other day it was like summertime. <laughs> so different. Okay, we've got our petals all ready. There's our three pretty little blossoms. We're gonna set these aside. And now I'm gonna bring in the leaves. I'm just gonna poke out the little little bits on this one. Always good to have a pokey tool in your craft room. This is one of my most used tools. I use it for so much. So once I get all those little bits out, I can kind of just run my finger over the back to make sure they're coming off. There we go. And if you guys don't have a trash can under your desk, you need one. I don't know. I didn't used to have one until like a year ago. I have no idea why I waited. It just, just doesn't even make any sense to me. I'm gonna bring in some cracked pistachio. Now, cracked pistachio is one of these colors where I could see you using um, different colored pint-sized pouncers with it. I use my light green pint-sized pouncer with it. 
And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit, not very much, because we're gonna go around the edges just to add that little hint of green. Now you might remember that for the stenciling, we used salvage patina. And that is because I didn't want to use the same green that I was gonna use to sort of highlight the leaves. Now this is more of a modern, I guess, kind of take, right, on cherry blossoms. Because you could die cut these out from green paper. You could completely color them in green. But I wanted to have these white centers on everything just to give it a really nice kind of light, modern, airy look. So because we use the salvage patina with this stencil, these are gonna pop more. They're gonna be more noticeable against the background. Whereas if I had used cracked pistachio on the background, they would have kind of just blended into the background. So keep that in mind when you are deciding how to put a card together, what kind of design you wanna create. The colors that you use on your die cuts they um, will be impacted quite a bit by what color your background is. And you can always use a white background and pretty much anything will uh, pop off of there. But if you're gonna have color on your background, you gotta think about those things and decide, oh, do I want this to fade into the background more or do I want it to be more noticeable? So you can see I went around the edges, but I wanted a little bit more green, so I kind of just pulled my pouncer across the top of different little spots here and there on those leaves. You see that? So not a ton of color, just enough to really give it a hint to, to, to tell your brain when you're looking at the card that, oh, that's a leaf. There we go. And if you wanted this to be more vibrant, you would want to use a dye ink rather than the oxides because the oxides tend to have a um, almost kind of like chalky look to them whereas dye inks are really gonna be bright, right, and kind of in your face. So depending on what you're going for, your ink selection can really impact it as well. So let's take a look back here at our piece that we created earlier. You see how it's dried now and it's super glittery. Let me see if I can pick it up in the light so you can see how glittery it is. I don't know, it's very glittery. It's not quite picking up in the light, but lots and lots of glitter in there. Very pretty. And it's got fun texture. See the texture there? So now when we have our pieces on here, that's gonna fade a little bit into the background, but it's gonna create this nice little home for our blossoms to sort of live on. This is their this is their landing zone. You see that? So we're gonna cut this down a little bit because you guys know I love a border on my cards. Let me grab my paper trimmer real quick. Yvette, you have a small can on your desk and a larger one under your desk. Yeah. Oh, it's pouring, Kathy? Your dog said no thanks. <laughs> That's like, my one dog loves whatever. He doesn't care. But uh, my other dog, man, she is, she will try to avoid going out at all costs. So I understand. Okay, I'm gonna cut this down Right now it's an A2 size panel, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. I want to cut it down so there's about, hmm, how much board? 
my brain is not doing math right now. I think we're going to cut about, I don't want half inch off. I don't know. We'll just, let's play it by ear. Well, let's go with a half inch. That's fine. So I'm going to take about a quarter of an inch off of each side. Right? Is that right? I don't know. We want to take it down to, oh no, we'll take it down to three and a half because that'll be a total of 0.75 inches off. Yeah, so then it'll be a little bit less than a half an inch on each side. So we want to take about the same amount off on here as well. I'm gonna see how we did. Need I think a little bit more. So it's it's gonna be three and a half and we want it to be four and three quarters. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off of each side here. See how we're doing. Eh, that's about right. Looks good enough. So you can cut it down as much or as little as you want, it's totally personal preference. If I'm not gonna have a second border, so sometimes I'll do like a thin colored or black border. And if I do that, I like my piece to be a little bit larger so that then there's also a thin white border. But if I'm not doing that, I want my border around my card to be pretty big. So either half an inch or, um, what is that? This is not a half inch inch it's uh it's like th three eighths i guess i think is what it technically is i don't know the maths are hard guys the maths are hard when i'm not or when i'm doing a live <laughs> i'm actually really good at math i know i did it's uh it's questionable right now but do you see by cutting that down, we kind of made the home for the cherry blossoms even more centralized. So it looks like they are meant to fit right there. And we're gonna pop this up with some foam tape. But I just wanted to show you what this is gonna look like once we get on there. Got some black hybrid ink. We're gonna come in and stamp our sentiment. Now you could do this either directly onto your card base or you could stamp and die cut it, which is what I had done here. Um, I think I like the look of it stamped and die cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll do one just so you can see. But I'm gonna pull out my mini Misty. Yes, I have, I have multiple different, um, stamping platforms you guys and my mini misty is actually the one i use most of the time for sentiments i pull it out where why don't i have a clean piece of cardstock oh because i made the background by pressing it on the inking palette that's why and in fact we could what time are we at 10 44 Let's go ahead and add some clear embossing powder on this as well, and we'll give it just a little bit of shine. That'll be fun. Let me grab my, let me grab a scrap piece of paper real quick that I can do, use to pour my embossing powder. So the black hybrid ink, great for alcohol inks, great for watercolors. It is an all around ink. It does, it's a hybrid, so it does stay wet a little bit longer than your traditional water-based dye ink. So it, you can also heat emboss it, um, or it's easier to heat emboss because it stays wet that little bit longer. I'm gonna double stamp it so I can get some Real nice, solid black color on there. Move this out of the way. 
into the pile. The pile that is created when I do my lives. And we're gonna come in with just some, what do I have here? No, that's white. We don't wanna do white, Charlene. We just wanna use clear. No, 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 this is Ranger Clear Super Fine. This will just give it a little bit of shine. Not too, too much. Uh oh, hold on guys, my, my cords are all kind of twisted here. What's going on? I think I, yep, I, I put my fancy coffee cup base, I put it over the top of my heat tool so it wasn't wanting to come. I'm just going to run this along until it melts. If you're feeling very fast, you can even add a second on there. I was, oh yeah, I got a little bit. And that'll just, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it does give it a little bit of shine on the text. It's not as pronounced as if you would use a black embossing powder. I get a lot of questions about people or from people asking why I would use black embossing powder because black embossing powder of all the embossing powders is probably the most difficult to work with. And I think it's, I've come to the conclusion it's because it's so highly pigmented um, because it is black. And the reason that I choose sometimes to use black embossing powder rather than black ink with clear embossing powder is because it does look different. It absolutely looks different. You don't get as much of a raise when you use clear embossing powder as you do when you use black embossing powder. So try them both, I always encourage people, uh, and see which you like best. I like to use both. I use them different ways, different times. I'm also a really big fan of heat embossing with white embossing powder over on black cardstock. So I'm using the coordinating die here to cut this out. And let's see. Grab one grab my little baby here to cut it. And we will cut out a couple extra. of the die cut so we can layer them up to give this a little bit more dimension on the top of our card. So if you weren't here at the beginning of the live, just a reminder at the end, I am going to choose someone to send my card to. So definitely leave a comment if that is something that you are interested in receiving. I will pick someone from the comments to send it off to. Last week, Yvette won the card and I mailed it off to her and thankfully it arrived in one piece. <laughs> I saw she posted it on her Instagram. So I cut out two extras and I'm just going to glue these all together. And come in. Pick them all up and kind of pinch around the edges. That's why it's good to use liquid glue when you're doing this. And that's just gonna, see, that's just gonna give it a little bit of loft. 
make it stand out from the card background a little bit more. But not add a lot of extra dimension on the front of the card. So we're going to put this probably right around there somewhere. So let's go ahead and glue our flowers on here. I'm doing this a little bit backwards. Um, I'm, the only reason I'm doing this a little backwards is because I already have it arranged. So normally I would put this piece onto my, um, onto my card base first. But since we already have them all nice and arranged here, I'm just going to go ahead and glue them down first. Now you'll notice that I have my leaves going in different directions. That is a conscious decision. You can, I always, my suggestion anyway, is that you, you either have your leaves going in various directions or you have them all going in the same direction. And if you're going to have them all going in the same direction, then you really want to try and make sure that they are lined up correctly because if they look like even a little bit off, it is more noticeable. Your eye tends to look at that and go, wait, that doesn't quite look right. So it is easier, especially if you're new to card making, to just have them all go different directions and then you don't have to worry about it. You can see I chose to put the, the flower that we did, which was more of the standard uh, cherry blossom. I chose to put that in between the other two flowers so that way it balances out, right? These flowers look different, but this flower is in the center, so it doesn't matter. And now I get a little bit of that leaf is going to be coming down over the sentiment. So it's going to kind of create an, a nice little world for the sentiment to live in with its, with its cherry blossom friends. Okay, I'm gonna stand up to do this. It's a little bit harder to line up sentiments when I'm sitting down. I think that looks pretty straight. What do we think guys? Oh, it needs to come up just a scooch. And T-Ruler. If you ever struggle with making sure things are lined up, T-Ruler is your friend. Okay, we're going to get some foam tape and now I do have the big giant roll of foam tape Picket Fence Studios has but I've been trying to use up my scraps lately because I keep all my little scrap pieces in um, this bag and I've been trying to use them up so I'm actually going to I think put these on the back of the card. Where's my nonstick scissors? Here they are. So I'm just gonna cut several little pieces here from those circles. And we'll put them along different spots here on the back of the card. Or that you like the leaf bit over the sentiment. Yeah, it just kind of like makes the sentiment more interesting to look at too. Because it, in addition to being something you're reading, it has a decorative element now. With having the little leaf kind of go over it. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Nicole. 
Now this is parchment paper. So this foam tape comes in a big giant roll. I would show you, but it's in my cabinet and I'd have to go grab it. But it's like, it's like a massive roll. Like you'll have so much foam tape and it's, if you like a thicker foam tape, it's really awesome. It's not um, super thick, but it's also not super thin. So it's a good like in between, I guess. And uh, so if you wanna make it into panels or use it to die cut with, cause it die cuts beautifully, I cut off rectangles of it and then I put parchment paper on the exposed sticky side. And then I can, like this is die cut uh, because I wanted to create a shaker circle and it's great for that. And then the parchment, don't use wax paper. I made that mistake once and it was not good. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna cut this one in half and look, yay, I used up lots of little bits now. There, and that'll give us lots of support. Throw this away. Oh man, usually I try to eat like a breakfast bar or something, guys. Cause it's on the west coast right now, it's almost 11. But the live for me starts at 10. It starts at 12 central, but it starts at 10 for me. And so I usually try to eat like some kind of breakfast bar before I start. So you guys don't have to hear my um, stomach growling, but because the my couch got delivered this morning, I was running around like a crazy person and um, did not get a chance to eat anything. So my tummy is growling. Hopefully you can't hear it. I'm curious, how many of you make your own card bases? And if you do, do you make them in bulk and have them on hand or do you make them as you go? I make my own and I think I'm probably in the minority, but I do not make my bases in bulk. I make them for each card as I make it. And um, I don't know why I do that, but I prefer to do it. I, I think making card bases in bulk sounds about as fun to me as uh, clawing my eyes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Nicole, you make and go? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's just, I am, I know some people find it like, calming to and I can understand because I find it calming to sit in color and I think some people find it calming to sit and do things like make card bases or die cut I don't I I get bored really quickly and so yeah it's better for me to just make it as I go although I do force myself to make them because I know that if I don't make it and I don't put the card on there right then and there, that then I'll just have a card panel without a card base hanging out and it won't get sent or donated, it'll just sit there. So I always make sure to put my cards on a card base right at the time. So we're gonna try and line this up. I think my card base is a little big. I love Nina, but I have found that it is not quite true to size. It's slightly bigger than eight and a half by 11. Um, at least when you get it in the big ream which is annoying. Not that big of a deal though. Card, card maker problems, right? 
How's that look? I think it looks pretty good. Let's put it down. Let's see. There we go. Well, we committed now, guys. There we go. Oh, that looks so pretty popped up. See what a difference that adds when you pop it up and then you have, it's white on white, but it's very noticeable. It creates that shadow around it because it's, because of the loft from the foam tape. It's so pretty. Love the way things look popped up. Judith, you make as you go. Yvette not calming us all at all, but a necessity. <laughs> Necessary evil. <laughs> Deli, you make them individually. Okay, so I'm not alone. Arlette, you make them in bulk. Okay, so it seems pretty split. I saw, Yvette, I saw you restocked your stash with white, craft, and black. All right, guys, here is our finished card. And I'm not going to add any bling or anything because we have that beautiful bling. In fact, I'm going to... Where's my settings here? I feel like the brightness is... Let me turn down the brightness a little bit on my camera. There. Okay, maybe you can see better now. I think it might have been up too high. I don't know. But there is our finished card with our beautiful, delicate little cherry blossoms. So pretty. And I'll show you, I made this one just as a quick test because I wasn't sure if I wanted white centers or pink centers. Um, so I did the top one with pink and the other ones with white just as a trial run last night when I was deciding what I wanted to do on my card. I think I like the white centers. And in fact, it might look pretty to put a little, you could put like a little sequin in the center if you wanted to. Let's see, just to give you a sense. Or you could keep the little piece that popped out and do a, a color. Oh yeah, let's add a little sequin, guys. That just kind of creates another little layer of interest. I'm gonna do two smaller sequins and then one larger sequin. Oh, that looks so good. You guys can't see the sparkle, but I can. It looks so good with the sparkle. Bling, bling, baby. So just a little droppy of glue. I don't boop. Um, like Kathy Zilski. What can I do? Shazam? <laughs> no, I won't do that. I promise. Um, <laughs> I need something to say when I'm putting my, my sequins on there. Okay, now I'll show you. Look how cute. I think the sequin added a nice little extra layer of... Those are the iridescent moonshine sequins that I have told Nicole she can never discontinue because they are my favorite. And that's going to finish off our card. Let me switch you guys around here and grab a drink of my coffee. I didn't drink like any of my coffee during the live today. Usually I stop. Hmm. I have a coffee break here and there, but I didn't have any. Okay. Who wants a card? Who wants a card? Let's see. Let me look and see. I want to make sure that I am seeing all of all the comments here. I think I am. I know last time I was not seeing the comments on Facebook, but I think I'm seeing them now. So let's go. I'm going to cover my eyes. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And I'm just scrolling up and down. And stop. Who do I have? 
Ah, Rhonda Burt. Rhonda, if you are still here, send me an email. You can send that to contact at dreamcraftcreate.com. That is my personal email. Again, that's contact at dreamcraftcreate.com. Send me your address and I will mail this card off to you. Yay! All right, everybody. Anybody have any other questions, comments? Anybody? No? We're all good? Thanks, Kathy. Be sure to like the video, said Kathy. Thumbs up. Love it. Share the video, like it. That's always super helpful to the algorithms. Um, and if you have a crafty friend that doesn't know about these lives, tell them about them because I hang out and uh, just try to show you guys some stuff and teach along the way and have a fun little crafty morning hanging out. So I hope that you all have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I'll see you next Tuesday, noon central. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Pick a Fence Studios YouTube channel as well because I send out a notification there. And um, I'll see you guys then. Yay, bye.